Well, good evening and welcome to your very first Connect Group meeting of 2023. You know, our first Connect Group study is uh, loosely based on a book called Divine Applause by, by, by a man by the name of Jeff Anderson. We're going to take a, a four-week dive into improving our relationship with God by examining just how God sees us. You know, I think we're all pretty familiar with the passage in 2 Chronicles chapter 16. In verse 9, it tells us, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless toward him. Besides the imagery of these two giant eyeballs searching the globe, I'm fascinated by the idea that God is looking uh, that he even takes action and he takes action in response to what he sees in us. He responds to us. You know, as a father whose kids were involved in, in sports and in band and in, in every other kind of extracurricular activity under the sun, I, I can tell you from any experience. And as a, as a parent, you probably experience this as well. Whenever your kids are playing, whether it's sports or band, whatever, boy, you seek them out. You try to figure out, okay, he's number this or she's playing this and they're over there. And when we find our kid in that group, in that activity, our eyes, our focus go right to where they are. We want to watch them. We want to see what they're doing. Well, the thought is if, if God is our father is watching us as his kids, are there times or, or circumstances in our lives that invite his special focused attention in a good way? In other words, could we start living in ways that actually capture or grab God's attention? I, I know from my own kids' experience, as often as I'm watching them, I find that they're watching me to see if I'm watching them as well. Can't tell you how many times they've caught a pass, spiked a ball, made a free throw, uh, played a song, whatever, and their eyes, man, they go to the audience and they try to find mom and dad to see if we're watching I think kids like the idea of their parents watching what they're doing. I think the same is true for us and God. But we may need to rethink that a little bit because that can create a problem oftentimes, I think, for us. Our, our journey with God is, is a lot like a person who's going through life with, with a hearing impediment or, or limited eyesight. We suffer from separation we, we seek a God who does not speak to us audibly. We seek a God who we cannot see with our own eyes. And this conflicts with the way that we naturally develop relationships in life. Uh, we get together just as you are tonight in a, in a small group. We get together with friends, with brothers and sisters in Christ. We play sports with teammates. We work closely with colleagues. Uh, we come home after work to our family. We enjoy a meal together. Look one another in the eye, tell stories, share experiences, and then get to know one another on a deeper, more intimate level. And then there's God. You know, relating to God can sometimes feel like having to wear a blindfold, and at the same time, your hearing aids have been sent to the shop, then facing the chaos of, of trying to walk through a massive crowd of people. You know, you're told that, that God is near and that he's eager to spend time with you. So you do what feels like pushing your way through crowds, feeling your way in silence and in darkness down a long hallway that's full of doors on, on either side. And, and you're trying to find the right door. And then maybe, just maybe, God will be behind the door you happen to open. You see, it's not easy to relate to a God that we can't see or that we can't hear. We can't see the reaction on his face. We can't feel his touch when we need it. We can't see the look of approval in his eyes. We also can't see the compassion on his face when, when he hurts for us. We can't see his look of concern when, when we're in danger or headed the wrong direction. And, and yet we're called not only to believe, but also to follow and to actually love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know, it's tough being separate from God, but that's what sin has created. It's even tougher because we don't know what we're missing. Separation is all we've ever known. Uh, of course, that does not keep us from longing to hear God's applause and to see the delight on our Father's face. 
You know, if you refuse to settle for a life that is disconnected from God, there is hope. Just as the hearing impaired learn to read body language, learn to read facial expressions and reactions, we can learn to encounter God by hearing and seeing and, and living differently. If we too learn to compensate, we can see him even though our physical eyes can't. We can hear him even though our physical ears don't. We can sense that he's noticing us, that he's smiling at us, that he's pleased with us. When we relate to God differently, which in this context simply means biblically, we can have much more of the connection I think we're all looking for. You know, my dad was in his 80s when we finally convinced him to get some hearing aids. Uh, he went down and got fitted for some really nice and some really expensive hearing aids. And, and man, to my knowledge, all things were great. But not long after he had them, I went by his house and, and I noticed that his brand new hearing aids were in the case on the counter in his bathroom. And, and I asked him, I said, Dad, you spent all that money. You got these great hearing aids. Why aren't you wearing them? He said, well, the noise was just too much. All the noise, all the things that he could now hear bothered him. So he simply chose not to hear. He chose silence. You know, likewise, we too have a choice in applying our spiritual senses to relate to and walk with God. Jesus referred to this as having eyes that see and ears that hear in Matthew chapter 13. Jesus had been teaching in parables and, and his disciples wanted to know, why, why do you teach in this way, Jesus? And, and his answer to them is insightful to our discussion. Listen to what he says. Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 13. Jesus said this, This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, You will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Listen to this. But blessed are you... Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Jesus here isn't talking about physical limitations to seeing and hearing God. He's talking about spiritual limitations. You know, I firmly believe we long to see and hear clearly. So why do we often opt for silence? I think maybe it's because we've gotten grown, we've grown, gotten accustomed to, or we've gotten used to this spiritual separation to the point that, that living in relative isolation from God seems normal. But I want more. And I know you do too. I, I desire experiences with, with my Heavenly Father like the ones that we read about in the Bible, understandably, but different. I want personal encounters with God that are just for me. That might be selfish, but I know my kids want to experience just me sometimes, and I want to experience God just me and Him sometimes. Well, here's the good news. When it comes to walking more closely with God and hearing Him better and seeing Him better, a desire for more of that will work in your favor because you are not the only one who wants more. God does as well. God bless and enjoy your study together tonight.